Welcome to Glass Painting 101. So far we've done a video on how to do frost on a glass, how to paint a sand dollar on a glass, and how to use uh, templates behind the glass to give yourself the best chance of creating something that looks like what you're trying to create. This is the third video and this one's going to be on how to use a marker to draw what you want to paint so that when you go to paint it it's the shape that you would like it to be. It just gives you another option in order to to do glass painting. Uh, this is just a sharpie. It is an ultra fine point permanent sharpie marker. These uh, I think are made with oils. It's going to adhere uh, temporarily to the glass. It's not going to stay there forever. I've got a sand dollar. I want to put a starfish. I want it to be around, I don't know, maybe this big. And I want it to be slightly in front of my sand dollar. So I'm thinking it's going to be something, something like this. That makes the middle. You've got your, your thing. You, then you've probably got a leg coming down. We're going to have, um, something like that. I think they have five legs, so we'll make sure that we get them into five legs. I don't know, maybe one, two, three, four. So something like so. Best guess. Making it up as I go. So to do this, I need to know where am I going to start and end. And I need to keep myself somewhat centered in front of the glass where I believe I would like the design to be since I'm freehanding this one. So, so let's say that becomes the very center of the starfish. And I'm going to draw kind of a line. The end of the, uh, the arm of the starfish and it needs to be a little fatter when it gets to the bottom. Then there's going to be another leg that comes in. And I'm just, again, very lightly. You may, I don't even know if you could see that. I'm i put this behind it if you can see it a little bit better. If I tilt it around. It's very light gray. I picked the gray on purpose because I really didn't want to have to worry about this being super dark. It's just a guide so that I know what I'm doing. And I can make adjustments to make sure that it looks like a starfish. Where the last thing I want to do is create something that doesn't look like a starfish. Or where the arms, so I've got one, two, three, four. This one is going to be a little bit wider. And then this one going to be more like that. But you want the arms to roughly be the same length. So to double check that, I can just take my brush and go, okay, here's the center, right? That's one length. Back into the center. That one's two. Okay. The one that's closer to me is a little shorter. That's fine. Yeah, because the one's in the front, if I want to make it look a little three-dimensional, really shouldn't be as long as the, uh, the ones that are standing up. To paint the starfish, I'm going to be using Calypso Sky, which is for folk art. Uh, it's just a nice shade of teal. I'm going to be using some white. I'm going to use the black in order to mix up some gray and shadows to go along with it. I'm also going to be using a couple of tools that I can make dots on to my starfish to make the little bumps towards the end. I'm going to use the same set of brushes, which is the six round, the zero and the double zero. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is mix a little bit of the Calypso with the gray and a little bit more of the white to give myself something darker that I can use uh, in a couple of places where I really want it to stand out. 
And by mixing the Calypso into the gray, this, this blue, I'm going to get a shade of bluish gray. And I know that looks probably like I went fairly dark, but that's on purpose. I need to have some contrast in a couple of places in order for this to really stand out as three-dimensional. I'm going to follow my lines that I had made. And you can see I don't have a ton of paint on this brush, just enough to be able to draw a couple of lines out. So I'm going to mark my shadows first. To make it three-dimensional, the shadow should be bigger as it gets closer to the center. And I'm not going to worry about overly cleaning my brush. I'm going to leave a little bit of that gray that was on there. And I'm going to start pouncing my paint. And I'm pouncing the paint because I'm not trying to... Uh, it's, it's not a smooth surface, right? This is a starfish. So I'm thinking that a starfish is going to have all kinds of bumps and, and things like that. So I'm just going to let that happen naturally with the paint. I'm going to get rid of a lot of the blue color on there and I'm going to go grab some white. But there's still some blue on my brush because I don't want this to be a uh, cartoon so much cartoony as I want it to have a little bit of realistic, I guess, realism to it. It's not going to be exact. Uh, that's going to be my lightest edge at the other end of the legs. And it seems like it's a lot of white, but we're going to pounce in more blue. <laughs> some of that darker paint that we were working with earlier and, and glob it on a little bit in the center because I want to be able to merge with that paint. I'm just wiping the excess off. I'm not cleaning the brush. I'm now going to go in and put some pound a little blue in there. Now I'm going to press it so that it naturally blends itself. And then I'm going to take some of this blue and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the white. So it's a slightly lighter shade of the blue than what we started out with, but it isn't a massive uh, change in the color. Okay, and now I'm going to come in and dot that all around where that last thing of white was and start filling in. Now I got to fix the center. I'm picking up some direct blue here and I'm going to come out with some more of the blue and start working on just the details of the legs. <music> I'm going down that center because that's where there's going to be a few raised dots in a second. I'm going to look at it and say, okay, I need to add an area where there's a good bit of darker color. Mm -hmm. 
is clean. I've played around with the angles a little bit. I'm looking to see what I like, what I don't like. I think this guy needs to be a whole lot fatter. Come back here to that center where I had and start doing some of those details. I'm going to take my dot tool. I'm going to get pure white and I'm using a, a fairly small one. And I'm going to go dot, 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 right? And be, the first dot's going to be the fattest. And because I haven't, I don't go back and get more paint in between the dots. By the time I get to the last dot, it's, it's automatically smaller than whatever I started with. <music> Next thing I'm going to do is another set of dots, but I want to go a little bit smaller. I think I'm going to go with this guy. So when you compare them, about half the size of the one I was just using. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to get a little bit of the darker and the medium gray, and I'm just doing a quick mix. I'm going to the right of every single one of these dots that I just did. All, it, that, all that's going to do is help to create a little bit of a shadow. And if you're thinking, is she making these decisions on the fly? Yeah, uh, I, I am making these decisions on the fly. original light gray from when I was painting the sand dollar. So I'm going to go grab uh, with the even smaller one. I went down one more size and I'm going to use that to start creating some dimension. And I'm going to grab a small amount of the blue and I'm, I'm going to literally just pound and what that does is it honestly it, it's mixing the paint on the palette essentially is what I'm doing it's called stippling where I feel like I want to put a little bit of darker paint I'm going to go in and start doing that adding some of the blue and the gray and the different shades. Art doesn't have to be about making something look exactly the way it does in nature. It often has, uh, it's often just more about making it look close a representation of nature. Now, those white dots seem a little white to me in a few spots, so I'm just toning it down with a tiny bit of the blue, but not a whole lot. Again, I'm at the point where I'm working on my personal preferences. Like this particular arm, so I'm gonna have to fix it. 
don't like something you painted, you can take it back off as long as you haven't baked it yet. So I'm going to make an adjustment here to this arm, which I feel like it should be going up in that direction. And that means I'm going to remove the paint that I just did. So this is how you fix it. nail off. Now the paint's off. So if you make a mistake, remove the paint and then you fix the mistake. This is the frost paint. I'm just going back over the area where I just took it off and I'm putting it right back on. But we've fixed the starfish. We could be finished at this point, or if we wanted to, we could just keep on going. It's really up to you. It depends on what you want it to look like and how detailed you want it to be and at what point you are happy with the way it, it turned out. As we move around the glass, the next thing I'm going to teach you is how to do some translucent paints. So we're going to delve in with some of the PBOs and that'll be the next round. <laughs> 